Hi guys, welcome back to my XPS guide. Now I'm gonna review Ross. Let's start from the passives. His normal form passives is kinda mediocre. As a physical DPS, he only has 200% attack and true double hand attack boost. So you still need a lot to max him. And as a character who relies on limit burst, he only gets 150% limit burst damage. I hope it is at least 200%, right? However, he has nice killer set and 500 static attack. Luckily, his breath shift is far better than the normal form. He gets a huge 2500 static attack in the breath shift form, better through double hand attack boost and killers. The downside is of course, you cannot stay forever in this form. You can only stay for 4 turns before reverting back to the normal and need to wait 3 turns before being able to shift again. And like other Neo Vision, try to make him into X plus 2 because you really want his STMR for the static attack boost. But the most important thing is the full limit burst at the start of battle because he doesn't have ability which can fill his limit burst gauge in the normal form and he need 90 limit burst crystals to use his limit burst. I don't think you need X plus 3 because the boost is not that huge for the brave shield form. That's all for the passives, now let's take a look at the normal form ability and how to use them. Sure, this form is less powerful but it is kinda okay because this is simply a setup form. What you want to do in this form is to use your limit burst on the second turn so you get 50 times damage modifier boost for your limit burst. This is why X plus 2 is important. Because if not, then good luck on getting 90 limit burst crystals before the third turn. The damage is not great but by any means it deals 200 times water damage to one enemy. It consists of 13 hits which is a nightmare because it doesn't belong to any chaining family. However, he has a setup ability called dual silhouette and that makes his limit burst become tag chaining move. And finally, on the third turn, you go into Brashy form to do the next preparation. Let's take a look at it. On this form, you can buff yourself with two cooldown abilities which will improve your water damage by 40% and increase the 40 times limit burst damage modifier for 2 turns. These two abilities are available in the normal form but remember you have used your limit burst gauge. So you need to use your grandest to fill it up again. Now it is clear why you need his X plus 2 form, right? Because without X plus 2, you probably cannot use his normal for limit burst in the second turn which is gonna slow down the process and finally on the fourth turn you can unleash your breath shift limit burst which is the strongest attack that he has it deals an amazing 450 times versus machine and 381 times versus non-machine enemy as you can see it is amazing in terms of damage modifier Global exclusive loses in a non-class of will situation and that's how you use him. The problem is if enemy doesn't die, then you need to wait 3 more turns before able to use his can realize their decision again and when it is ready, you are on normal form and need to wait before able to go into brave shift form again. His other abilities on the brave shift form are kinda mediocre. It gives you 100% machine killer which is small. 50% physical machine mitigation is useful but you probably need it in the early part of battle. And yeah, you don't want to shift on the early part of battle, right? So enough about the abilities, now let's take a look at partner. He is locked to the water element, so you want to maximize his water damage. First problem he has is the imperil. 
he is only able to imperil 120% water resist, which is kind of unacceptable in today's standard. The best character for water imperil is Laguna because he can imperil 145% water resist. However, I prefer Tidebringer Kaito, who is able to break better with only yeah 10% less powerful water imperil. Tidebringer Kaito also able to buff all allies water damage by 45%, so 5% better than what Rush can do by himself. The best buffer for Rush is our Yoshikiri. With his intrinsic ability or limit burst, he can grant Rush 300% limit burst damage. And on X plus 3, he is also able to grant 45% water damage boost. Lord of the Ski, Lord of the Sea Mikol is not that great anymore because he only has 250% limit burst damage and 350% stats buff. But Yoshigiri is better, okay, with his intrinsic. And finally, Stormseeker Aster is good because of 100% limit burst damage field effect, okay, because Rush Strongest Attack is his limit burst. And if you prefer water damage, then you can use Oracle, Maiden Luna Freya, or Ferris. Remember that you can use limit burst damage modifier buffers like Paladin Sylvie or Warrior of Light. I don't put them on the screen because I cannot test whether the buffs works or not. They should work, okay, based on the description, but just test them by yourself. Okay, and let me know in the comment because I don't have Rush. That's all for partner, my conclusion for Rush. Rush is definitely the strongest water finisher we have for non-class of wheel content at this point. He's also simple to use and has very cool CG limit burst. I can say he is Ranger Blue in this x Ranger things, okay? In Season 3, they use Silerman version because all girls. And in Season 4 story, it's time for the Power Ranger version of FFB. The only problem Rush has is we are gonna get Rookie Hunter Titus soon, who is the same water physical DPS and finisher. And it seems he is stronger than Rush. Sure, he is premium, but the point is the release date is kind of close, okay? I believe, yeah, within one or two weeks, we're gonna get Titus, okay? And based on my quick calculation, Titus Limit Burst can deal like 400 to 430 times water damage and works against all type, not only machine. Sure, you need to stack it, but again, the point is higher potential damage because yes, these characters are made for Dark Vision. So decide which character you want to pick. Rush Rush Master Reward is good for himself because it increases 500 static attack, but for other characters, not so good. 180 attack in this day is like 120 back then because the strongest weapon attack is above 200 points. The Trust Master Reward is also locked to water, so not that good. STMR is nice because it has very high attack stats, but that's it. Ross is the one who needed the most because of 500 static attack. And finally, the Fission card. Yes, the Fission card has very high attack stats, but the abilities are suck for physical DPS in this meta. Because partial BV rate won't increase your damage. I don't say they are useless, but for DPS, you don't want to have that. Okay, what you want is static attack so in the end i can only give him like 8.5 maybe 9 maximum okay out of 10. so yeah but i think that's all you need to know about rush thank you very much for watching please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more final fantasy brave xvs guys bye bye guys